I don't know if you are like me at all, and maybe you've believed a myth in your life. Maybe something somebody told you many years ago. Um, maybe you still believe it now. And one of, the, one of the things that I used to believe is you can't eat and then go swim straight afterwards because you might cramp or you might drown. I see some parents laughing because you probably told your kids that myth before. Um, but it's actually a myth. It's not real. Because your body's still able to, to function, it just maybe might make your, your body a little bit heavier. But you can still actually go and swim after you've eaten. It's something that my parents used to always tell me. And recently, I only realized it's because they were probably just lazy and they didn't want to, just after they ate, they didn't want to go and stand at the water and see if I'm, I'm still alive. Or um, another myth that I used to believe is people would always tell you, you, you shouldn't crack your knuckles. If you crack your knuckles, you're either going to get like fat little knobs on your knuckles or, you, or you're going to get arthritis. But it's actually fake news. There's actually little air pockets, little bubbles in between your joints that every time you crack, that's what makes the noise. I know some people get freaked out when you crack knuckles. I, I do it all the time. It's just one of the things I do every morning. Um, or another myth that some people believe is if you swallow your bubble gum, it's going to take you seven years for to digest. Who's, who swallows bubble gum here? I do it all the time. But it's actually a myth. Your, your digestive system can't actually process it. So it just goes straight into your mouth and eventually comes out a little bit later. So I just had a bubble gum just now and I had to swallow it before I came up. So I'll see him a bit later on. Um, but often, oftentimes in our lives, often, <laughs> oftentimes in life we... We believe these myths. It's these old tales that people would tell us, and um, we would just live with it our whole lives and believing it as if it were true. And sometimes in our lives, I believe that we believe this myth about following Jesus or, the, or this myth about faith that we could just stand still and just hope and pray that God does something in our lives. We believe that we serve a miracle-working, wonder-working God that is so much bigger than our minds can actually comprehend but I believe Jesus wants us to actually move. He doesn't want us to get stuck in our faith, stuck where we are, and just stay still. I believe once we've accepted Him, there needs to be a movement. There needs to be something that comes next. And you see, I, if, I could, if I could title this, if I could give it a title, I would talk about the whole idea that movement creates momentum. You see, I believe when we start getting something moving, there's momentum that gets created and eventually it starts rolling and moving forward. If you have to think of a ball that gets pushed down a hill, it doesn't just automatically get pushed down, but somebody needs to actually physically push it and there's momentum that gets created and it starts moving forward in that direction. And oftentimes in our life, in my life, I find myself getting pulled in every different direction. And eventually, because I'm, I'm moving towards that, there's momentum that gets, that gets moved and, and produced. And a lot of the times, I find myself in an unhealthy space in life or unhealthy area in life because of this momentum that I'm gaining. And this morning, I hope and I pray that God's Word would encourage you, it would encourage me to move in the direction that He's called us to move into. Craig Rochelle, he wrote a book called um, Winning the War in Your Mind. And one of the, the main quotes or phrases that he says is that our lives, your life, my life, moves in the direction of our strongest thoughts. That where we're thinking, eventually we will find ourselves. That what we put into our mind and feed into our mind, eventually we will find ourselves standing in that space. And it's the same with our lives. What we feed ourselves with, if we're feeding ourselves with unhealthy things, we'll find ourselves in unhealthy spaces. So this morning, movement creates momentum in our lives. And we pick this account up in the book of Luke. Dr. Luke writes this about a, Jesus and a guy called Zacchaeus. And I want to read this to you. And it, and it says this in Luke chapter 19, verse 1. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector in the region, and he became very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So there he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quickly come down. I must be a guest at your home today. In your home today. 
Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and he took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be a guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord. And I will, if I've cheated anyone on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Please, Jesus, let SARS give us our money back. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. I love this account. It's not just a story or a fairy tale, but it's something true that actually really happened. So this man named Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector. And what that means is in those days, the Jews had to pay the Romans tax. So the Romans would employ Jews as tax collectors, and what tax collectors would do is they would take money from their own Jewish people and add a little bit of tax extra onto it, and they would keep the extra and pay the Romans what was due to Rome. And that's why tax collectors were put into the same bracket, as, into the same boat, as, into the same living space as prostitutes or notorious sinners. They were all classified the same. That's why people didn't like tax collectors those days. And they probably didn't like short tax collectors either. So Zacchaeus, being a tax collector, he knew what we heard of this man named Jesus. He might have heard from a friend or a buddy or whoever it might be. I'm sure he had very few friends, but he had a lot of money. But he heard about this man named Jesus, and he thought, if I could just see him, it would be enough for me. So Zacchaeus eventually couldn't get through the crowds, and he climbed up into a tree, and he saw Jesus. He got a glimpse of Jesus, but Jesus noticed him as well. And eventually, Jesus called him down from the tree, and Zacchaeus jumped down, and eventually, Jesus came over to his house. I think Jesus was a little bit gangster. He didn't even ask Zacchaeus, can I come over to your place? He just said, I'm coming to your house for dinner. Jesus just invited himself over. I'm sure you probably have some friends or family members who just come over, even if you don't invite them. And if you're laughing too loud, you're probably that family member who just goes to other people's house and uninvited. But Jesus just went there and something changed, something flipped in Zacchaeus' life. And he became generous. Salvation came into his house. He found the grace of Jesus and his life completely changed forever. And you see, I believe that the story tells us that when we start moving, there's momentum that gets created in our lives. And if I could give you three simple points, three simple thoughts today that we take from the Scripture that I believe we could take and we could apply in our lives. And the first one is to move from. Move from. You see, Zacchaeus needed to move from. He had to move from his place that he was in. Everybody was talking down on him. Everybody probably hated him, so to say. Nobody liked tax collectors. But he knew he heard of Jesus, and he needed to move from where he was, what he was doing, to be able to see Jesus. And maybe in your life, maybe in my life, there's areas that we need to move from. I don't know what it looks like for you, for each of us. It probably looks differently. It might be having to move from an unhealthy thinking pattern. Maybe you've been thinking about yourself in an unhealthy way or maybe somebody spoke something over you and maybe you just believed it your whole life or maybe it could be a sin that you've been holding on to for so many years and you feel like you can't get away from it. I believe the same way Zacchaeus, he just chose to move and because of him moving, there was a momentum that was created in his life. I believe in your life, in my life, Jesus is calling us to move away, move from the things that's been holding us back from this genuine relationship that he has, that he wants for you and for me. See, Zacchaeus moved. He decided, he got to a point where he's tired of, of just being on the outskirts of life. He needed to be in it. But because he was short, because he couldn't get there, he had to climb up a tree and eventually climb this tree and he saw Jesus and something changed. And I believe God wants you and He wants me to move from. Move from the things that's been holding us back from our lifestyle. Holding us back from a pursuing a healthy and a godly relationship with our Savior. And secondly, the second thing He does is He moves through. I think sometimes in our lives we need to move through the pain. You see, the Bible says, Jesus says there's going to be trouble. Life is going to throw us curveball. Life's li lives. Life is going to get tough. And I'm not telling you this, but Jesus says this. He says that life gets tough sometimes. In the book of John 16, verse 33, Jesus says, this, says I have I've told you this, that you may have peace in me. That's the good news. But the tough news comes here on earth. You may have many trials and sorrows. 
but take heart, I have overcome the world. You see, Jesus says there's going to be times that's tough. 2020, 2021 has thrown us too many curveballs to count. We didn't know we were going to be living through a pandemic. We didn't know life is going to get this tough. But Jesus says, in this world, life is going to get tough. Things are going to get tough. There's going to be health issues. There's going to be financial issues. There's going to be economical issues. There's going to be things in your life or through your life that might get tough. But he says that we need to move through. The same way Zacchaeus needed to move through the crowd and climb up to this tree, he needed to move through to see this momentum being unfolded in his life. You see, your life, my life, we need to be able to be people that move through. Sometimes life's going to get tough. Yes, sometimes things are going to get challenging, but we have to choose to move through. One of the things I love to do is sit on TikTok. It's an app that I classify myself as young, even though I am not young anymore. Um, I find myself spending endless amount of time on this app called TikTok, and there's this guy that always ends up popping up onto my feed, and he says that tough times never last, but only tough people last. It's one of the things that I have to remind myself that the way I can get tougher is me having to move through. Move through the pain, move through the circumstances, move through the the things that people have spoken about me or said about me. I have to choose to move through to see this momentum develop in my life. And lastly, the last point is we have to move towards. You see, oftentimes in our lives, we could get stuck and we could get stagnant where we are. Tough times will come and oftentimes we feel like tough times last and we get stuck there. And we never move forward. And maybe you, like me, I'm, I'm one of those people who get distracted all the time. If I get distracted by something, I end up throwing my whole life into that. One, at, at a time in life, it was coffee. And I would, all I would do is I would watch you, my whole YouTube feed would be about coffee. Whatever I'd speak to our people, it would be about coffee. And, and eventually, it started getting boring. And I got myself stuck into a little rut, into a little zone. And eventually, it moved on to the next thing. And then it moves on to the next thing. And More often than not, it kind of takes me away from what God has actually planned for me. It seems like good things. It seems like great things, but it pulls me away from the momentum that God has for me. And maybe you're like me who gets distracted by every little thing on the left or the right. But I believe what we have to start doing is we need to move towards. Move towards the plan. Move towards the purposes that God has for us. You see, Zacchaeus, after he climbed the tree and Jesus called him down, he jumped down and Jesus went to, to his home. And there was a shift in Zacchaeus' life. Something changed in his life forever. Jesus came into his life and he said there was salvation that entered his home that day. His life got changed and Zacchaeus would probably be with heaven, in heaven right now with Jesus. And salvation came to him and God changed his life completely. And it didn't just stay there. True repentance didn't just stay there. He said, Jesus, I'll give back more than what I've taken. I'll give back four times as much. I'll give back to the poor. I'll give back to those that I've cheated. You see, salvation and and repentance makes us turn away. Turn away from the things that we've been doing and follow a new way. You see, the amazing thing about this account is Jesus called Zacchaeus by name. See, he knows you. He knows me. He knows the plans and he he knows the purposes that he has for you. And God's grace, His love for you meets us where we are. We don't have to become someone else or do something else. We just have to come to Him the same way we are. And He does all the work. He shows us His love. He shows us His grace. He shows us who He's called us to be. Zacchaeus' life completely changed because he chose to move. He chose to move from the way he was living, the things he was doing. He chose to move through the crowds when life gets tough. He chose to push through and move through. And eventually he chose to move towards, move towards the plans, move towards the purposes that God has for him. And I don't know where you are right now. God knows your name. He knows your future. But maybe you're finding yourself in a moment there where life is tough. Or maybe you're finding yourself in a moment where there's so many crowds, there's so many walls that you feel like you can't move through. I believe that Jesus wants to come and He wants to break something through in your life this morning. That He wants to come and He wants to do something new and something fresh. The same way He came and He changed Zacchaeus' life completely. He wants to do that for you. As we get ready to close, 
The Apostle Paul, he writes the scripture in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 and he tells us this. Now all glory to God who is able, that our God is able through His mighty power at work within who? Within us, within you, within me to accomplish infinitely more than we can ask, think or imagine. That we have this God who can blow our minds that he, we can't even comprehend what, we, what He can do in our lives. And He wants to work in your life and work in my life. If we could say, Jesus, would you come and enter my life and come into my home? I invite you today, God. I'm choosing to move away from the way I was living. I'm choosing to move from, I'm choosing to move through these circumstances. And I'm choosing to move towards the plans and purposes that you have for me. And when I choose to move, God, I'll see this momentum develop in my life. That the gates of hell will not have, the the plans of hell, the plans of the enemy will not have a hold on my life anymore. They will choose to move through and choose to move towards your plans. So let's take a moment to respond to God this morning. So we are, would you close your eyes? I don't know where you're at and where you are in your faith walk with Jesus. But this morning, would you choose to move? Choose to have this momentum being created in your life. That God's grace meets you just where you are. He loves you so much so that none of us are too far from the reach of God. That He wants to do infinitely more than we can ask, think, or imagine. I pray this morning, Jesus, for each of us as we sit here this morning, God. Would you give us a fresh revelation of your love? And this morning, maybe you're sitting here and you're going through something and and it seems like a life is tough and you don't know how to get through it. I pray as we just choose to move this morning, that God would do something in our lives, that Jesus would come and he would do something by the power of his Holy Spirit. If you're finding yourself in a difficult season, in a season where you need to push through and go through and move through, I want to ask you, would you stand with me as a response to God, as a response to Him saying, Jesus, here I am. I'm needing to push through. I'm needing to move through. And in this moment as we stand, God, would you come and would you do something? Would you come and do something fresh, do something new in our lives? God, I pray for each person as we stand this morning, God, would you come and would you give us a fresh revelation of how much you love us? That we will be reminded that your grace meets us just where we are, God. And as we move forward from today and as you develop momentum in our lives, God, as we move forward, God, that the gates of hell will not prevail, God, that the plans of the enemy don't have a hold on our lives anymore, God, that we will be be people of, of hope, God, wherever we go, God, beacons of hope, wherever we go, God, that we would plunder hell and populate heaven, God, that we will be people that shine the light in our community of Mossa Bay and beyond that, God, wherever we go, whichever business we walk into, every shop we go, God, that we will be people of light, God, every business person that we see, every friend that we meet, every colleague that we go to, every family member that we encounter, God, would we, we be the light, God, I pray for that this morning, God, as we choose to take steps of movement, God, moving from and moving through and moving towards the plan that you have for us, God, would you help us? Would you guide us and would you lead us, God? Make us people of hope, God. Lead us, God, and use us like never before. In Jesus' mighty name, everyone says amen.